Hello and welcome to the Wednesday News Show. We've got a packed uh, show for you today with paraclimbing, speed climbing and a bunch of other news as well. Nice t-shirt. Thanks. Yeah, so first up, we have got some ladies who have been making the news with some very interesting ascents from all over the world. In Norway, Mina Leslie Wajastic has repeated Ethan Pringle's monster 50 meter line Nordic plumber 8C. Mina returned to the Flatanger cave to finish the route after extending her stay in Norway, and two days before she was due to return, she managed to make the ascent. Nice one, Nina. Along with American alpinist Gabe Hayden, Brett Harrington has made the first ascent of Sha Texi, a 1300-meter 511A route up the west face of the Devil's Paw, a huge granite peak on the border between Alaska and Canada. The climb took the pair 12 hours in total and 20-plus abseils on the way down. A remarkable feat of climbing. Mobile de Courmayeur. Venga Leaf, topping out! And a bit closer to home, Leaf Sanso, former world champion, has managed to climb all 82 4,000 meter peaks in the Alps. Leaf, who is based in Chamonix and was lead world champion multiple times in the 90s, as well as being crowned ice climbing champion in 2001, started the mission in 2017. Finishing it with the classic Putri Integral Ridge and paragliding off the summit of Mont Blanc. Nice one guys, uh, that is three very impressive feats of climbing there from v three very impressive ladies. And one guy, Gabe, I'm not forgetting about you. Sorry Gabe, you're a guy. That route she finished off is like my number one route in the Alps I'd love to do one day. <laughs> okay. Seriously, it's like, I, I, that's that's it. I'm well impressed she finished on that. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it is very impressive. Awesome, awesome. And awesome. she flew off the top of the Mont Which is easier than walking down. Oh yeah, that is true. Uh, so the speed and paraclimbing finals uh, finished this weekend in Innsbruck and we've already covered the bouldering and the combined so now is the results of the final bit of that competition. In the paraclimbing competition the winners were men's AU2, Great Britain's Matthew Phillips. Matt Phillips, there it is, finds the top. First climber to top the route, he takes the gold medal. Men's B1, Japan's Kirichio Kabayashi. Men's B2, USA's Justin Salas. Men ALP, Francis Thierry Delarue. Oh, he just begins to slot now. <laughs> Men's RP1, Italy's Alessio Cornamassini. <laughs> Men's RP2, Iran's Benham Kalaji. Men's RP3, Francis Roman Panu. In the women's comp, women's AU2, Francis Saline Perret. <laughs> women's B2, Great Britain's Abigail Robinson. <laughs> women's AL2, Francis Lucie Jacquet. Women's RP2, Great Britain's Hannah Baldwin. And women's RP3, Japan's Aika Ishida. In the speed climbing, the winner of the men was Iran's Riza Aliporshina. And for the women, Poland's Aleksandra Rudzinska. So that's kind of it. That's all the highlights that have rounded up now. That's that competition done. There's finished. a lot of categories in um, paraclimbing, isn't there? Yeah, shall I quickly, I'll explain what they are. Go, right? okay. okay. Right, so, so um, AU2 is AU2. forearm amputee. B1, visual impairment. B2, also visual impairment. ALP is leg amputee. And then men's RP1, 2 and 3 are all neurological physical and mental support to different levels. Yep. Uh, and then the same for the women. So women's AU2, forearm yep. amputee, women's B2, visual impairment, 
same categories down there. So yeah, lots of different categories and it is quite complicated uh, to work out which athletes fit into which groups. Mm -hmm. But that's it, that's the run through. Great Britain, uh, obviously doing something right. They've obviously got a very good coach. They do, and talking about the very good coach, we're editing a film currently about, um, I think just like a day out in the Peak Districts with the pa British Paraplane team featuring those guys that won gold medals. So very excited to see that and very excited to uh, get let you guys see that as well. It's going to be good. Now on Monday we released, as I said, the highlights film for the bouldering and the combined. And there were many, 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 <coughs> many, many comments uh, underneath that video. Mm -hmm. We kind of titled it, this is the future of the Olympic event, which it is. So that combined final, that's what the Olympic event is going to look we like. We weren't trying to clickbait you. We weren't, genuinely, um, but it did inspire a lot of debate. And we actually feel like we're in a position to answer some of this debate. Some of them. Some of them, because uh, last Friday we were in Innsbruck. Yep, there's a fire in the studio. It's buzzy, isn't it? Uh, we were in Innsbruck with Black Diamond, and Black Diamond put on a very special press conference. And they invited along athletes, so Adam Ondra was there. They invited along IFSC representatives. There was the uh, editor of Rock and Ice magazine. Yep. And then the head Francis. main dude at Black Diamond. But they were all there, and they were chatting about it. And one of the issues we're going to talk about today is this thing about why speed was included and why they decided to do the combined. Yeah. Do you want to kick it off? Well, yeah, I think uh, from the conference uh, and the, the guy from the Olympic uh, committee was there and like his simple answer was that there are, uh, the Olympics is a very crowded event. There's lots of like different events going on. There's lots of different medals to give out. And, and the, the fact is that it's the first time that climbing has been included and it can only really be given one medal. So the, essentially the choice was between including all the uh, qualifications or the, um, uh, all, the disciplines. all the disciplines or just like taking one of them. So basically just doing lead or just doing speed or just doing bouldering. So I think it's, if you look at it that way, it's pretty logical that they've included all three of the disciplines and made it into a combined thing. It's obviously not ideal for the, the guys that have been watching IFSC for the last five, 10 years or whatever, for all the guys that have been working on it and all the athletes and stuff like that because they train in specific ways um, and very few people train for all three. But the fact remains is that by uh, allowing all three disciplines a chance at uh, a, a part in the Olympics, then at least you know they're kind of pleasing everyone and not annoying two disciplines and the yeah. only pleasing one. And it was because Adam's Adam Ondra's uh, standpoint has always been that he he kind of goes towards the side that they should have picked one, and he thinks lead climbing should yeah. maybe be the one. But he does he says he kind of gets it, he understands it. Um, one thing that kind of annoys me is that, is the way everyone's always like, our oh, speed climb is not a proper sport, right? And I, I understand where people are coming from, because when I'm at a crag, it's about as far removed from crag climbing as possible. But mm -hmm. 100 meters running isn't proper running then. You know what I mean? Because it's like a very specific type of running. Like when you go for a run, you run most days out here, you go for a run. You yeah. don't like doing a massive 100 meter sprint, hugely ripped, you go running. So what's the difference between something like 100 metres and something like speed climb 100. Is it not just a category of something and that's kind of fair enough? Yeah, I think it's just a, diff a slight different question whether it's a, a legitimate form of the sport and whether it should be included in the Olympics. I think that it is a legitimate form of the sport. You see the way those guys train, the, the, the fact that it is an amazing spectacle that makes like total sense. Um, I, I don't necessarily think it is the same kind of spectacle as like lead climbing, for example, or, or I agree, bouldering. I agree. Yeah. I, think it, I think they're more engaging, they're more exciting, but you know, I think it's it's certainly a, a you know a very legitimate form of the sport. I but it th that isn't. Th I think a lot of the question was whether it should be kind of part of the Olympic yeah. setup. Well, the people were kind of raising in the comments on on Monday. They were like, why makes why make lead climb as speed climb? Why make speed climb as lead climb? Yeah. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. There, there was a, we did an interview with Eddie Folks, um, who's the IFSC photographer, and you'll see that <coughs> in full at another point. But he raised an interesting issue, which was he's seen an increase in the respect between climbers because suddenly they're having to do each other's disciplines, and suddenly you get lead climbers who are being like, "Wow, speed is hard," mm. or speed climbers who are saying, I, "I can't, I can't boulder as well as you can." Yeah. And he was saying there's a quite a nice atmosphere at the moment because all the athletes are getting more respect for each other because of this integration of the sports. I thought it was quite an interesting point of view. Like it's, yeah, it's nice. Yeah. I hadn't even thought of that. I think also interesting that basically all the finalists were pretty much, there were no speed climbers in the, the six finalists in the combined event at the weekend. I mean, it was literally just the lead climbers and the speed climbers. Um, like Jakob Schuber won for the men. 
yeah, and your gun broke one for the, the females, but like their times compared to like the speed climbers were like seconds behind kind of thing. Yeah. And in a sport where every millisecond counts in speed climbing, it's like they're on another level. But yet those are the guys that will make it through. So it like, again, it kind of goes back to that kind of the way that they're processing the results, like the, the multiplications and stuff like that. Um, I can't remember the top of my but head. Maybe, maybe that is an argument for the other way. Maybe because if we've got lead climbers not climbing speed very well, mm. is that representing our sport? Because if they're smashing up one in 10 seconds looking slow, is that a good showcase? I, yeah, I don't know. yeah, yeah. No, I, I agree. I think it's a weird... I, I would have always thought you'd just like take their place in that, their place in that, and you'd add them together and they'd have a total number kind of thing. So like it would play more into the hands of the speed climbers. But the way it's, it, 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 it goes, you're basically better to have like one weak one and two strong ones. And the speed climb is always going to have one strong one and two weak ones. Mm. So, I don't know. I think it's... I, I feel a bit bad for the speed, speed climbers, to be honest. Because they're just not... They're the totally different build to yeah, the... They're like machines. The, and the they've boulders. got yeah. massive legs. Yeah, 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 Stefano yeah. Gasolfi has not got massive legs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He hasn't got massive legs. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, so I, I, in a way, I kind of feel bad for them. Because I like... And, and going back to that... Um, uh, what, what Eddie Folk was saying, the respect and stuff like that. I think people are, are now respecting what the speed climbers are doing and yet they're not pretty much not going to have a chance in the Olympics, I reckon. Yeah, it, it, I think it was one of those things because they had one medal, they were, whatever anyone decided, it, people were going to have an opinion against it. But the fact is, it's, that's the decision, that's what it is. And what, we, what everyone is hoping is that climbing is going to be enough of an impact and the Olympic Committee are going to be impressed enough mm. to give us more medals. Yeah. Give us more medals, then we can do more with it. But we've got to get to that stage, and I do understand how that's been a really tricky process for everyone involved. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was that was kind of like that. That was what was discussed in this big big panel meeting, um, and hopefully we're going to be bringing you more insults, uh, insults, insights, <laughs> insults to the IFSC. Yeah, many insults. Uh, there, there were lots of questions. <laughs> Uh, they were getting asked. heckled. They were getting abused. Like we were shouting at them. Uh, no, it was, it was very polite. It but was very polite. We, was very we're polite. hopefully going to be bringing you uh, more from that very soon, including possibly a transcript of the whole event, maybe. Um, so, yeah, stay tuned. Transcripts, and, and we shot the whole thing as well. So there's, there's that possibly going to go up on the Black Diamond website, mm. uh, and we'll share it with you, because there's some interesting thoughts to it, for sure. Um, yeah. 9B counter. Nope. Okay, so we ran into a very uh, busy and very motivated and very coachy um, Brett, uh, Josh, La Brett, Josh Larson uh, at the weekend. Um, at the uh, World Championships, he in when he's not vlogging for Cold Ice Mini, he um, coaches the American team. He's one of the coaches on the team. But before he was there, he was in Madagascar, and here's a little clip of their big walling, portal edging, birthday sharing, Charlotte morning waking up in time in Madagascar. Let's do this. Yeah, we made it to the base of our route. In the Karambuni wall. Josh is climbing. Got a big rope art here. And the poor ledge in the big hole bag. It waits like a dead zip. When things don't go as planned, you gotta replan. Those roots are a bit very dirty and there's no chalk and it's kind of run out, so we're having a hard time. Might be one um, we should have maybe wrapped down, I don't know. We just went for it, motivated, but... <laughs> yeah, now we're gonna set up the Port Ledge. Are we? We've done something. BB night in Port Ledge. First time for both of us. Ooh. Happy birthday, Charlotte. Oh yeah, thank you. Good morning. <laughs> that realized my birthday wish. <laughs> Wake up on my birthday on a Crazy girl. I've just embedded on the uh, Epic TV handpick from the web section Magnus Mitbo's first vlog with Jujimufu, who is this huge, stacked YouTuber who does fitness stuff. Big lad. He's a big boy. And they're, they're doing a, um, a collab together. 
And since they've been doing this, he's got thousands more followers. So this got me thinking, uh, who would you like to see us collab with in a real world and a, and a crazy world? Who would you collab with? Uh, I like Colin and Samir. Will Smith. That's who I, that he's got a massive YouTube channel. Is that, is that the reason why? He's a really big Instagrammer. He's funny. You just, you just want his numbers. I'd love to meet him, would you? I just... Oh, Colin Samir though, I you know? Big. But anyway, what do you think? Who should we collab with? Because we're open to ideas and we reckon if enough of you nagged them, then it might happen. Yeah, go on Colin Samir, they're more likely. This is why yes. I'm more realistic. Will Smith's like got millions of comments. Go on Colin Samir's uh, YouTube and say, <laughs> Collab with Climbing Daily, yeah, and you'll get mad numbers. Uh, shop. shop stuff, shop stuff. So the Beale Ghost Harness is our pick of the week. Uh, it's on a very good deal on the Epic TV shop, and we did a big video with it that's coming out, we think, on Friday. Where well, not we think, we, we know. Th yeah? Yeah, it's in the schedule. It's happening, yo. Um, it's, we, Alpine, yeah, I said that. It's practicing for Will Smith. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, we went alpine climbing, we went tri climbing, and we went indoor climbing all in a day. Uh, it was pretty epic, and that's coming out Friday, so check it out for a sort of review, and check it out on the Epic TV website. Link in the copy below, because it's a storming bargain right now. Storm. <laughs> storming bargain. Okay, this weekend we're going, we're heading to the Pilador in uh, Poland. Pilador, we've talked, talked about it a bit but before in the show, it's the Oscars for the Alpine community. Alpinists there that we're going to be talking to and we're going to be bringing you stuff updates etc etc Instagram follow us on Instagram uh, and you'll be able to follow us what we get up to at the weekend you excited uh, I'm not excited by the six o'clock flight I'm very excited about being going to Poland because I've never been before it's gonna be good anyone in Poland uh, who's gonna to go to Pilar door hit us up let's 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 meet up and speak and mm. have some Polish beer what's Polish beer like good Let's drink some of that. I'll drink to that. Thanks. See you later. Cheers. Bye.